Today, we're gonna be talking about the most important audio filter when processing audio. It is important that you fully understand how the equalizer works. I think a lot of you will get a ton of value out of this video. I'm gonna cover everything you need to know. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. An equalizer is also known as a tonal shaper. What that means is it allows you to adjust specific frequency ranges on a specific track so you can take a vocal recording or a music recording and you can adjust specific frequency ranges within that recording it's also used as a corrective tool so if you have certain noises within a track that you want to eliminate or help remove you can use an equalizer to adjust the specific frequency ranges around those noises to try and help remove them or reduce them on the official product that you release the equalizer is a very powerful tool. It's by far the most powerful tool for editing audio. When first getting into EQ, it can be a little bit overwhelming because there's so many different types of EQ. You have the dual band, you have dynamic, you have graphic EQs, you have parametric, semi-parametric EQs, and it can seem a bit overwhelming. Each and every EQ edits the frequency of a specific audio signal. Frequency is a measurement describing the number of waves to pass a given amount of time. Hertz, specifically HZ, is the number of waves that pass per second. In the graph below, what you see is an example of what 100 Hertz waveform looks like across 20 milliseconds. So depending on the frequency of an audio signal, you will have different waveforms for that frequency. A lower frequency will have a wider waveform. For example, that 100 Hertz waveform. If you look down below, a little bit higher frequency will have a tighter waveform. The 500 Hertz example, as you see on screen, has more waves within that specific time period. What you need to wrap your head around is the fact that there are 100 waves in one second time with a 100 Hertz frequency. Same goes for the 500 Hertz frequency. There are 500 waves within one second time for a 500 Hertz frequency audio signal. Here are some very important frequency ranges to make note of. The rumble sound will sit around the 25 to 40 Hertz frequency range. This is gonna be a very low frequency that you know, a sub in your vehicle could make. And I do say could make because a lot of subs are actually tuned to around the 60 to 90 Hertz range, but like a 30 Hertz range would be like an 18 inch sub. It would be a very low frequency. The bottom is gonna be around the 60 to 90 Hertz. Boom slash punch is 100 to 170 Hertz. You're gonna get a lot of warmth from vocals and instruments and that 130 to 220 Hertz range. The fullness slash muddiness sounds will come in around 250 to 450 hertz. The honky sounds will come in around 450 to 1000 hertz. Tinny or metallic type of sounds will be in that 1K to 2K hertz range. The crunch will be around that 2K to 4K. Edginess or presence in your voice, presence in vocals and presence in instruments is gonna be that 3.5 to 6K range. Sibilance, the S's is gonna be anywhere from four to 8K depending on the vocal. Generally, this hits right at six to 7K Hertz. A lot of clarity is gonna be in that six to 10K Hertz range. You're gonna get that piercing sound at eight to 12 and a half K Hertz. And then you have air from 15 to 20 K. It's important to fully understand these frequency ranges when editing the EQ for your music track or for a podcast or just your vocals. There are specific frequency ranges that are very important when editing the EQ for your vocals. Let's take a look at those. I want you to keep in mind that the ranges mentioned here depend on the person and the microphone and the environment that that person is in. Everyone has a different frequency range, but this is a general idea of what you should be doing with these specific frequency ranges. The too low area or the rumble. Generally, you wanna cut everything from your vocals 
around that 75 hertz and below. Two, you have the main vocal range. Most people's main vocal comes in around the punch and warmth area. Generally, you wanna boost the 100 to 300 hertz range. Muddy vocals suck. Muddiness is a very real problem when processing audio for vocals. If possible, without damaging the, the vocals, reduce the 500 to 800 hertz range. Keep in mind, you really want a narrow Q. Q stands for bandwidth, and we'll talk about bands here in a second. Presence, you really want to present your vocals nicely. Generally, you wanna boost the three to 5K range without damaging the main vocal range. Depending on the sound you're going for, you might want more presence than warmth and punch. This is all up to you. And last but not least, the sibilance, the S sounds, generally want to be cut out of a vocal track or at least reduced so it's not so ear piercing. The way an equalizer works is it edits certain frequency ranges. Some equalizers have fixed frequency ranges and some allow you to select the frequency ranges that you're going to edit. These frequency ranges are also denoted as bands. When we're talking about a band, we're talking about a certain frequency range. So when I say you want to adjust the band in the sibilance area or the frequency range in the sibilance area, you're adjusting the band in that sibilance frequency range. Each one of those bands has a certain bandwidth and a certain band type. The bandwidth is going to determine how much effect is going to be placed on frequency arranges around the band that you're selecting. So if you have a very narrow band, you're gonna only be adjusting a very narrow frequency range. If you have a wider band, you're going to be adjusting all of the frequency ranges that that band is hitting. There are certain band types I want to discuss, especially when editing audio for your vocals. On the left, you have the high pass band type. What you can tell in that graph there is the high pass cuts off audio in lower frequency ranges from where the band is set. The band width determines how steep that cutoff is. The low pass is the exact opposite of a high pass. It cuts off audio in the higher frequency ranges. The low shelf can either increase or decrease audio, creating a shelving effect like you see on the graph there. The high shelf does the exact opposite of a low shelf. It increases or decreases the higher frequency ranges from where that band is set. And then on the bottom, you see the regular old band. That band can either be thinner, longer, wider, Depending on where the band is, depending on the band width and the amount of volume change that you're applying to that frequency range, that is what a regular band looks like. If you guys have any questions when setting this stuff up or you're going through this and are still a bit confused, feel free to hop in my Discord server. We got a lot of smart dudes in there. I'm in there, so feel free to hop in there and at me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you're learning something from this video and you like the type of content that I'm creating, do me a solid, hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Next, we're gonna talk about setting up an EQ for yourself. I'm gonna give you the general practice of getting you started for setting the EQ. We listed the five important EQ ranges. We're gonna go through setting those five important EQ ranges up. You can use whatever EQ platform that you use. We use Equalizer APO in my server and my community. If you don't have Equalizer APO, I highly suggest it. And also I have a preset file for Equalizer APO with built-in compression, expander, equalizers, and noise gate filters on that preset file already. If you haven't, definitely check it out. There's some videos on that as well. For this video, you can use whatever EQ that you're currently using and feel free to just follow along with these steps. Step number one, we're gonna try and remove as much of that rumble as we can. The rumble range is actually an unnecessary frequency range for your vocals. You don't really want your vocals to be heavy bass in someone's ear. So what we're gonna do is a high pass band type, uh, set it around the 120 Hertz range. And then as you can see on the graph there, I'm cutting it off around, you know, uh, 75 Hertz or so. And uh, it's a nice gradual change there. So it's kind of a loose bandwidth. Make the bandwidth the way you like it. Set it where you like it as well. Anywhere from 100 to 150 Hertz for the band placement. The second step is to boost your main vocal ranges. 
Uh, what I do is actually place a couple bands similar to the graph you see in front of you. I have a couple bands. I have a band at uh, at the 120 hertz range and then one sitting right around uh, 275 hertz. And I boost the 120 hertz a few decibels and then I boost the 270 hertz a few more decibels than that. And then they're both fairly tight bandwidths. Um, it looks very similar to the graph that you're seeing on the screen in front of you. But what we're doing is bringing up that punch and warmth in our vocals. This is gonna be the main vocal range of your vocals. I highly suggest using like a program like Spectralissime or something like that. You can monitor the frequency ranges in your vocals and find out where that main vocal range is exactly for you and boost that exact frequency range. The third step will be removing that muddiness. A lot of this can be prevented by not over boosting the punch and warmth areas. But if you have a lot of muddiness in your vocals, consider doing a cut like this, a very tight EQ band in that 500 to 800 frequency range. What I do myself is actually a band that stretches from about 500 all the way to 1000 and i cut out just a few decibels in that range to help remove the nasally kind of sounds as well as uh, that muddy sound so that's how i do it um this is also very suggested just just keep in mind if you're going to do a decent cut on this range you want that bandwidth to be fairly tight you don't want to cut everything, you know, you don't want to decrease it by, you know, six decibels or something like that. Just a, just a little bit to reduce that, uh, that range. One decibel, two decibels might be fine anywhere between that. The fourth step is going to be bringing up the presence in your voice. What I suggest doing is using a wide band and bringing up the majority of the presence. So the entirety of the range from three to five K, I start my band around 2000 Hertz actually. And I go, I stretch it all the way to five K and I boost it by about two to three decibels. And the fifth step in this sequence is removing that sibilance. Some people literally cut this out entirely. They do a very narrow sibilance cut and they cut it all the way. What I do is just a, a slight reduction similar to the graph in front of you right in that 6,000 to 7,000 range depending on the person's vocals. It generally hits around 6,000 to 7,000 but it does stretch across four to 10K. What you want to do is reduce it just a few decibels, maybe even three or four decibels, sometimes even all the way up to six if your sibilances or your S sound is very strong. The reason we're doing this is because the sibilance sounds are very harsh and they can be hard on the ears. And you want to reduce that as much as possible. You don't want to hurt your audience's ears every time you say the S word, <laughs> the S word, an S word, a word with S in it. I want to also suggest some additional adjustments you should consider. The nasal sound, like I mentioned before, a slight reduction at the 1K range will reduce a nasally vocal. If you have an artist or a singer that has a nasally type of voice and you kind of want to reduce that a bit, right in that 1000 range, you can do a fairly wide band on that. Do not over reduce this range because you can really damage a vocal that way, but you can bring this down a few decibels to really help counter that nasally sound. A nice pierce and air boost can bring a really beautiful artistic sound to your vocal. If you do a high shelf band type and boost that audio from that 8K range and on, it will bring a really artistic sound to your vocal. This is what I do. This is actually set up in the preset file for Equalizer APO as well. So if you like the sound of my microphone, you might consider doing a boost in this range as well. Another useful adjustment to consider, this is something else that we do uh, for the preset as well, is remove the unnecessary air sounds. We use a low, low pass band type and we do it right around the 15, uh, I think it's actually like 13.25K is what it's set to. I would have to check on that. But what we do is a low pass band type there and we cut off all audio from that point forward. That way, uh, n no unnecessary air sounds are coming in. So, you know, with condenser microphones, this can, this can be a real problem. Condenser microphones are 
extremely sensitive and they pick up a lot of that airy type of sound. So if you get like a humming or something like that, this might be a, be a cut that you need. If your equalizer allows it, here's an extremely helpful tip. This is what we do again in our equalizer APO preset file. We remove that rumble and that air, so that low pass and high pass uh, band type in a separate EQ from the rest of the EQ adjustments. So we have this EQ that looks like this, where we cut the low rumbles and the high air sounds that we don't need in our vocals. And then below that process after that is an EQ with the other adjustments on it. So you might consider doing two EQs if you can. After going through that step-by-step -step process and on also doing some additional adjustments to the EQ, you should have a really good sounding vocal. Now keep in mind your vocals are different than mine. Your vocals have their own tonal ranges. They also have their own needs. You might have a more presence type of voice. A lot of females need more boost in the presence to really bring out the shine and that brightness and in that beautiful sound in their voice, especially in music if they're singing. A lot of this depends on the person that is doing the EQ. So keep that in mind. This is also going to just be a very good starting place for you. So if you set this up, keep in mind that you're going to want to make adjustments to this over time as you learn more about your voice and how it sounds with the current EQ setup after this video, make adjustments to it, play with it and figure out how to make your voice sound the way you want it to. If you need additional help setting this type of stuff up, feel free to hop in my discord server. We got a lot of smart people in there. I'm saying it all the time, so I won't repeat myself. I feel like you guys are getting sick of me saying that. So I'll stop saying it so much. I'm trying, I'm trying. Also, I wanna point out that there are different types of sounds that you can get by adjusting EQ. Muddiness in vocals is generally a bad idea, but you're actually hearing it a lot these days in a lot of a lot of tracks because it brings out a certain sound in the song. Um, they're doing you know all kinds of different stuff with tinny sounds and all kinds of different varieties of things. So dabble with the sound types and practice making your vocals sound interesting. Anyways, the point I'm getting the point I'm making here is the science is the same. Everything that you learned in this video will work on any EQ that you're using. The science in this video, the math in this video will make sense anywhere. As long as you understand what we discussed in this video, you can take that and apply it to any EQ that you're using, play with that knowledge and learn how to improve it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I highly suggest checking out one of my other advanced filter audio videos that I made over the past couple of weeks. Compression, limiter, all that stuff. Definitely go check, give them a check out. Go check them out. Go, ch go check them. Give them a check. Ch check them out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.